Okay, we are ready for the post-race press conference here for the Red Bull Grand Prix of Spain, where Ducati have ended Yamaha's uh, winning run in MotoGP with a 1-2. And it's Jack Miller on the top step, the race winner for the first time in a dry MotoGP race. Jack, huge, huge congratulations. Not many dry eyes in the house here today, and especially for you as well, a roller coaster of emotions. But, you're back. You've won for Ducati as well. What a day. Oh, I don't know if I'm back. Let's say I'm, I'm here finally. <laughs> Let's say, you know, the last time I won was kind of a big, big old shock. Um, in the wet, this one definitely I've worked my, my, my ass off to arrive here and to get this. And uh, I've never rode that precise, that good in my whole entire life. I don't think I've ever done 25 laps in a row like that in my life. So it uh, felt fantastic to get that. Uh, yeah, I saw Fabio start to struggle, sort of. Uh, he got past me and got out to about 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.9. And then he started to like plateau and then almost come back towards me. And I was just sticking to my pace. And I thought, I've got to go now. And I looked at the lap board and I thought, oh, it's a long time to be out front by yourself. but. Uh, I was like, you got, to, you got to have a crack at it at least. But the bike honestly felt fantastic. Um, I can't thank the team enough for, I think the work we did throughout this weekend really paid off in dividends in, in, the, uh, in the race. You know, I did a lot of laps alone, a lot of laps just trying to put in pace and, and it worked out for us. Jack, you've had a few setbacks uh, over the last couple of weeks and you've also got an incredibly fast teammate to your right who's now leading the World Championship, which probably hasn't helped in terms of adding to the, the pressure as well. A great one too for you, but how hard have you had to dig for this? And at what point during the weekend, or maybe even just during the race, did you realise this race wins on? Uh, turn 12 on the last lap. <laughs> I didn't believe it, <laughs> to be honest. I was riding around going, this can't be real. This cannot be real. I remember saying that to myself at turn nine. I was thinking, this can't be real. There's no way this can be real. I've never done this in my life. I've normally won with a battle or something like that at the last corner. I've never been able to ride out front. And as Frankie knows, I'm always good at sort of sitting behind him for the last couple of laps and wait till the last corner and have a dig. But uh, yeah, it just was amazing. Um, like I said, the, the bike was phenomenal. I thought, you know, if I was going to do any time I'm going to do it, especially when I saw Franco, ah, sorry, saw Fabio struggling, I thought, is there any time you're going to be able to do one of these races? Because I've always looked at, you know, a Lorenzo style race, let's say, get out front and go. And I thought, geez, that'd be nice, you know, and then just cruise around for the rest of the, rest of the race, last five laps, no stress. But uh, I was thinking to myself, if you're ever going to do one of those races, today's your chance, champ, so give it a go. And I was able to do it. Um, Peko did a fantastic job, you know, he was there. Pushing me to the end, I saw it on the pit board, it was dropping, I had like two point, might even, did I have it up to about 2.8 or something? And you dropped it down to like 1.8. And I was thinking, oh, surely not on the last lap, come on. I was trying to ride to the pit board and just keep keep a decent bit of a gap and I even I didn't even know how close he was on the last lap but I buried it up the inside of the last corner like I was protecting all, like I was going in there with Moto 3 race with I had three bikes behind me but it was just me on my own so uh felt like a bit of a twat but anyway uh no massive thank you to the team they never they never give up on us and uh to, to Claudio Gigi 
Paolo and, and Davide, you know, they've had my back the whole time, these last couple of weeks especially, and uh, yeah, I can't thank them enough. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of Australian fans celebrating uh, into the night tonight for you, especially your family at home, who I'm sure you wish uh, were here, Jack. Uh, but just lastly, my last question to you, from a technical point of view, how important is this victory, not just for you, but for Ducati as well, given that this is a circuit you've notoriously struggled at? That must give you a lot of confidence for future races. I don't, I don't like the... Uh that this isn't a Ducati track, because I think we proved last year that it was a Ducati track. Um, you know, Dovi and I went third and fourth in the first race. I had massive arm pump and uh, Dovi was able to get around me, but uh, we went third and fourth in the first race and Pekka honestly probably could have run, won the second race and had that, uh, that uh, mechanical. So I think we proved already last year that this sort of package, you know, because the bike's quite similar, this package works pretty good around here, I think. So. Uh, but, yeah, for sure, to break a 15-year drought here definitely feels good. Jack, uh, many congratulations. Thank Enjoy you. the celebrations. Thank you very much. Thanks, indeed. mate. Uh, we now move on to Pekka Banyai, the world championship leader, uh, Pekka. Uh, fantastic and a, an eventful race as well for you today. But there were a few struggles earlier in the weekend, so this must taste really, really sweet. And you enjoyed a good battle as well uh, with your good friend, Frankie. Yes, uh... I think that this result is uh, better than uh, Portimao's one because um, in Portimao we arrived with the same bike of uh, Qatar and uh, everything was working well. This time we had to work a lot uh, on bike and today my feeling with it was incredible. I was very feeling, feeling great with everything and uh, I just struggled a bit at the start because my, I was thinking that Pushing like this with the rear tire uh, was difficult then to finish the race. But uh, I've seen that Jack, uh, Fabio or uh, all the other riders were uh, pushing a lot at the start. Then I see that my pace was good. I tried to recover the position. I tried to close the gap to, get to, to Jack. But uh, I take some risk uh, also with the front uh, that I've lost it at uh, two laps to go on the third seven. And, uh, and it was better to be calm and finish the race. For sure, today was the day of Jack. Uh, he did uh, amazing yesterday and today, so was, uh, he deserved this result. And uh, finish 1-2 in, in a track like this, for sure, give to us an extra motivation to arrive in circuits where our bike working better. Uh, Peko, I'm sure you're, you're desperate to try and taste the victory in MotoGP, and I'm sure it'll come at some stage this year, but you've got to be so impressed with your own performances. Three podiums now in the first four races, leading the World Championship. Is that beyond your expectations at the start of the season? Uh, <laughs> uh, this winter, I work a lot. I try to improve also myself on the training and, uh, and mentality, so... Um, I was not expecting a start like this. I was just trying to, to stay on top uh, five. And now I'm uh, the leader of the championship, so I'm very happy. We are just to continue like this and, uh, and wait uh, in other circuits where, where we will struggle if uh, we can do something like today. Uh, but in any case, uh, we have just to be happy. Also the team uh, with our work of today and our work of the first three races. Pekko, many congratulations you. on your championship lead, your second place today, and uh, yeah, we'll see you in Le Mans. Finally, we come to Franco Morbidelli. Uh, Franco, you had to work hard for that. We saw how much it meant to you as well with your post-race celebrations. Your first podium of 2021, top Yamaha as well. Tell us about your day. How hard was that? And well done. Thank you. It was really hard. Uh, we needed to work, uh, yeah, really precisely. And uh, Ramon uh, had to uh, take out his wand this weekend. And um, yeah, we were able to, to get better and better step by step. We were able to change a little bit our style on the bike. And uh, we were able to uh, find something uh, in the braking that allowed us to, to be so fast in the race and, and so consistent as well. So I'm really happy about that. Um, this podium tastes uh, taste fantastically uh, sweet. I'm, 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 I'm really, really happy because, you know, you all know the situation and 
you all know that it's really difficult and uh, still uh, here we are. So I'm, I'm really happy about that. Yeah, especially uh, Franco after what happened in Qatar, a fourth place in Portugal, followed up by a third place here. Um, that must give you some extra confidence and motivation for Le Mans. Not at all. Uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, I just, just try to live in the moment. Uh, I just try to enjoy the moment and don't predict the future too much because uh, this, this category is so tough. It's so difficult and um, you can be up there uh, today, but you can be down there tomorrow. Uh, so I live and I enjoy the moment. And just lastly, Franco, how difficult was it? I'm sure you could hear Peko behind you in, in large moments of that race. How hard was it to just keep him behind you? Yes, I tried to keep him behind me for as long as possible. Then, uh, then uh, I never, uh, I, I didn't even realized that he overtook me in the straight. I was just, I was uh, like uh, hit by uh, a lighting, you know. And uh, after that, I, I just tried to, to stay behind him. I, I put a hook uh, behind him and I tried, just tried to, to go with him. And, and finally, I was able, I was able to, to do it. And uh, finally, I wanted to put some, some pepper on, on him uh, in last laps, uh, but I didn't have the potential. I think I didn't have the potential to overtake him, but just just wanted to to How you do it? ah pepper take like the that? pepper, yeah, like that, like that. Not not cracked? No, <laughs> I like crack more. Old school. I go old school. <laughs> Franco, uh, congratulations on your first podium of 2021. Thank, Thank you very you. much. And uh, that's all from me, guys. Uh, now it's time to pass on to questions from members of the media. Paolo, you're up first. Yes, Paolo Janieri, Gazeta dello Sport. I think that, first of all, you disappointed many people today, Jack, because on the podium you forgot what everybody was expecting from you. Shui. No, but uh, if you listen to Fabio, uh, Ricardo invented the, 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 the Shui, so I leave it to him. Uh, we'll find something new eventually. Okay. But in these last uh, few weeks, there was a lot of criticism towards you. How, uh, you said before that it was tough for you because you are more sensible that, than everybody else is thinking. And uh, uh, how did you react? Uh, what was the thought that you had in your mind in these weeks? Uh, you know, I say I've been on a roller coaster of emotions now, you know, since uh, the finish. But uh, for sure, these last weeks um, haven't been easy. You know, I've been angry, frustrated, uh, not believing in, you know, not trusting in myself. I, I will have to say one massive thing. Uh, I, I now have a new life coach, let's say. Normally it's my mom, but she's, she's not real good. But Lucy Crutchlow called me up just out of the blue throughout the week and was telling me, you know, you are, you are fucking good. You can do it, like quite aggressive like this. And even this morning sent me a text. So I have to say a massive thank you to Lucy because it's, it, it feels good to hear stuff like this sometimes. You need it, you know. We are, at the end of the day, we're all human. We all have doubts. And, uh, yeah, I think the only reason you and I are friends, Paolo, still is because I can't read Italian. But, uh, <laughs> no, I, I haven't tried. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm only joking, mate. I don't even know. Another question for you, Jack. Niki Kovac from MZT Sport Online and Motor Revue Hungary. Uh, partly you answered my question because I wanted to ask what kind of message you are expecting to get from Cal after this awesome win and race. And well, I'm not talking about Cal. Uh, I'm talking about Lucy. Uh, what kind of message are you expecting to get from Lucy? <laughs> no, no, no. Lucy already sent me the message. Tell me I can. Cal's going to tell me that he told me everything I know and uh, that I wouldn't be here without him. You know Cal. <laughs> and my second question, please take it more as a joke than anything polemics. You got a really nice uh, advice that uh, you, should, you should start win races instead of do stoppies. Looks like you can do both. Uh, will you check today social media and the famous YouTube channel maybe? No. 99 seconds, please. I am going to drink about... 30 beers and hopefully wake up with not a hangover so I can ride tomorrow. 
<laughs> I'm not going to watch YouTube. <laughs> yeah, it's test. That's all right. Good. Nine before nine, you can wake up fine. Uh, yeah, Adam Wheeler from On Track Off Road. Sorry, Jack, just another one for you. Um, can you describe what you were thinking when you were catching Fabio? Um, because, you know, he was so dominant here last year, and then, you know, he dropped right the way through the pack. Uh, what was kind of on your mind? Was it, like, sort of seeing prey? Well, yeah, I was just not so much seeing prey, uh, so to speak. I was just, like, threw out the hook, and I was just, I'm thinking to myself, because I seen what he did last last year. Um, I'm thinking Fabio's going to demolish us all, so I thought, oh, I'll throw out the hook get towed around for a few laps and have a decent enough gap that I can wobble around for the last few laps and hopefully get a podium or something. And I, as I was doing that, we probably had about six six laps um, of into it. And then I seen, like, he got out to that gap and I, he wasn't going anymore. And if anything, I was starting to catch him back. And then in two laps, I caught back a massive chunk and I thought, you've got to go past him, he's, he's dropping. And, yeah, as soon as I did that, uh, you know, it wasn't too too hard, I knew where I could do it and where I could protect at least and um, did that. The biggest surprise for me was when I came around after I passed him when I seen point six on the board, I was like, that's a gap, you kidding, that's a gap. And then I was like, next lap it was like 1.2, I'm like, keep going, go, go. A lot of fun, but uh, also very stressful at the same time. You're just trying to, especially around here, you know, Hareth is, is so tight with these big bikes. It's a lot of fun, but when you, between wheelie and uh, with the device we have and everything like that, and then try and switch maps and be as precise as possible, it's not easy. It's it's a long race around here, 25 laps, but uh, it makes it all the more sweeter. I have another one, one for Peko and one for Franco. Uh, Peko, it's been a while since you were lead, leading the World Championship, and how is the feeling of being leading in, in MotoGP? And you, Franco, uh, is uh, Yamaha saying something to you? I mean, we know your situation, so it's okay. not a point to go over it again, but uh, are the, uh, the bosses of Yamaha telling you somehow, sorry, uh, we should have given you something more and uh, it was just not possible, but we'll try to help you as much as possible? Uh, I'm happy to be the World Championship uh, but I'm the leader ju from just one hour, I think. So I have to realize it and I have to don't think about it because we have 16 races in front and uh, we have to continue like this. And uh, I think that if I'm starting already just to think on the championship, I'm starting to be slower. So I have to think race by race and then uh, see what will happen. Uh, today we had the luck. To, to see Feb, Fabio struggle with uh, something. Uh, because today, if uh, if was not struggle, he was winning the race. Because was, his pace was incredible and uh, was, the domina was dominating this weekend. So uh, we had the luck. But in any case, uh, to win a championship, you have also to have luck in any case. So I'm happy. But uh, we have to finish just the race by race. and. Uh, we now arrive in circuits that we like, so let's wait there. Can I answer? Yes. Yeah. About being on the old bike. Yeah, I spoke with uh, I spoke with Lin, and um, I told him uh, my thoughts about the situation, and I was. Uh, really frank with him and uh, he was really frank with me as well he understood my feelings and uh, he understood my situation but we both finally uh, came to the conclusion that uh, we i was unlucky i was unlucky because of of the contracts because of the covid situation because of many things going on, so I wasn't lucky. And um, I hope that uh, what luck brought me, took me uh, this year, uh, is gonna give it back some, somewhere in life. If you want a Ducati, we have a good hookup. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, a 
a question for Jack. Hello? Jack, a question for, uh, for Jack. Jack, um, I think you make grown men cry or at least a, a, a chuckle um, or get ch choked. But um, seeing you so emotional um, in the, in the uh, park family, did you ever expect the, the emotions to be that big for you personally? And have you ever experienced it this much? Not a, a roller coaster like I've been on. Uh, honestly, I entered turn one and I'm going like disbelief. Turn two was start to cry. Turn five was like I'm like yeah, like screaming, carrying on, and then it's like just been like that ever since. You know, it's just, it's honestly I can't believe it. I don't know what it is. I guess you know you try something your whole life pretty much, and uh, it. When it finally happens, you know, the one thing you think about, let's say 90% of the time, when you're training, when you're doing everything, when you go to bed, you dream about this moment. And uh, when you can finally achieve it, I mean, uh, for, like I said, you just go through that roller coaster. You don't want to believe it. You think it's not true, that this, this can't be possible because you've been wrong so many times <laughs> before. And then, yeah, it hits you. So, I mean, I'm sorry to make everyone cry. I'm sorry to look like a, <laughs> a big softie on TV. But anyway, I, I couldn't hold it back, honestly. I was trying to fight it and hide. To hear everybody clapping and, uh, and applauding me in pit lane, you know, I, I try and be the most genuine person I can be. You know, I'm always happy and try to say hello to everybody. And, and I think th th this... Uh, Connection helps, so, you know, it, 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 when I win, I feel like people want, you know, I know there's a lot of people that want me to do good, so I think it, it, it meant a lot today, definitely. So I have to Hope say so. thank you to everybody there and thanks to, to everybody. Okay, well deserved, thanks very much. Thanks, Frank. Imre Paulovic from Motorsport Aktuelle Motorrad from Germany. A question to Jack. Jack, seven years ago, he was kind of a, a guinea pig, uh, being taken from Moto3 directly into MotoGP. Nobody has done it since. When you look back, would it have been easier for you to get to the point where you are if you would have spent a year or two in Moto2, or was uh, MotoGP the right way to go? I've said this many times before, I wouldn't do anything differently. For sure, it was difficult, but to arrive in MotoGP, I think if you speak with Frankie or with Pecco, to arrive here and to arrive in a factory team is it's not easy. Mine was, that was my, my way. I had that opportunity and yeah, I wouldn't choose anything different because it's worked for me for sure. If it didn't work and I was retired at home sitting on the couch, I would definitely be saying, ah, oh, shit, I wish I did things differently, but uh, it's not the case, you know, I'm, I'm very fortunate that it did work, but I put that down to the people I have around me that, that helped to, to guide me in the right direction because, you know, I was very young at that point in time and to guide me in the right direction and, uh, and also, I guess, my never give up attitude. I tried to never give up, I tried to keep working and trying to not only look at, my, you know, look at myself as well as uh, the things around. Hey guys, congratulations, uh, Thomas Bojard from GP Mag uh, in France. Just to follow up on that question, I remember you in 2012 with your red mob and your three bike. Would you ever have time thought that uh, said you could live such a day in this very same place? The most fantastic thing I think I've seen this weekend is uh, on the TV. Even like they keep playing it on replay, you know, of like talking about the Spanish championship. And uh, I'll never forget it. Uh, it was my first podium, Petco's first podium, also in Spanish Championship. The problem was I was about the same height as I am now. And Petco is honestly probably up to about here on me, tiny little guy, and it's, you know, if I look back on this moment and think, you know, I, I always thought, you know, this young kid, he was, I think, four, what you was? 14, 13 at the time? Uh, yeah, 13. Have to be, 13. Yeah, you was just allowed to go in, eh? 
do you think back to then and think that we will be teammates in the factory Ducati team and be 1-2 in Jerez in 2021? <laughs> you don't believe it. You would say you're dreaming, but uh, dreams do come true. Yeah, 10 years later, there you go. <laughs> Pretty impressive, but... Uh, ah, fucking cool. That's cool. Thank you, Jack. Thank you. Matteo Aglio from uh, La Stampa and GP1. I have a question for, uh, for Pecco. Pecco, congratulations. Now you are leading the championship, but do, do you feel ready to fight for this championship until the end? Because uh, in the last season, it wasn't uh, so easy for you. And now everything changed in, in a very short time. Like I said before, I worked a lot this winter to, to be more uh, concentrated and to have uh, to be in a different shape. So we are just in, at the first races of the season. We have uh, 16 in front, and uh, I would like to be more constant, more constant possible. Uh, the situation of today, maybe last year, was crashing, so uh, I think that I make a, a step in front about that thing. And uh, I just would like to be constant like this till the finish. But uh, now we will arrive in a circuit where uh, we are more strong, I think. And we have to continue thinking the same way. Uh, race by race, step by step, uh, working just uh, to adapt the bike. Uh, better uh, for uh, every layout and uh, and let's see. At the moment, I'm not thinking that I'm a contender for the championship. I'm just thinking to enjoy and to to be better every time. Uh, hi guys, Lewis Duncan from Autosport. Uh, congratulations. I have a question for Frankie. You said there you're unlucky with with the bike you got so does that make these results these podium results even sweeter for you or are they tinged with a little bit of frustration knowing that if you had a better bike then your potential is much better thank you this this podium uh feels wonderful and it feels more sweet uh than than uh, than than usual um there is this uh this shadow uh, of uh, frustration uh, around us, that's for sure. But when we manage to make good results, um, we are just happy. I think we are just happy. I am just happy. David Emmett, uh, on track off-road. Uh, a question for actually all three riders. I saw Jack and Peko, I saw while Franco was talking, uh, you were sort of looking at, your, at the sleeves, at the forearms, and I know you had arm pump, um, uh, uh, Jack, you had arm pump uh, surgery, uh, what was it, after, after Doha, I think. Um, do you think... That, and we saw that Fabio was struggling. Do you think that these bikes are becoming so that we're reaching the limits of human endurance almost? Because it seems that everyone is having to have this arm pump surgery just to be able to continue to ride the bike. We, I think I'm not sure. I don't think there's anyone on the grid left who hasn't had arm pump surgery. You haven't, have you? He hasn't. You haven't. I tried to be one of the last ones, but it didn't work out for me. <laughs> I, I think that is the way to work, no? The way you train, no? I always thought that too, but <laughs> normally I would be okay. If the season went on, if you know, you'd have the three tests leading up to the season, I was fine. But the way everything is compact, that's the issue for me. And I'm glad I did it because Jerez has been notorious for me in the past with arm pump. And I have to say, I didn't have it today. Looking at Fabio, I think he had it today, but he's had the surgery. So I guess it might've closed back up or something. But uh, it depends on your, uh, Valentino has never had it. And I mean, he's been riding these bikes for what, 100 years? <laughs> no issues for him. So, I mean, I think it depends on your body type as well. 
Yeah, I think it's the way to you you train uh, because uh, no one in the academy had this problem. So I don't know. Maybe we are lucky. Yeah, I agree with this too. What water are you drinking in the academy? Can I ask? A lot of things. <clears throat> A lot of sparkling water. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, guys, Simon Patterson from the race. Jack, congratulations, mate. Um, has there been any point in the past few weeks after the difficult start to the season where there's a little bit of self-doubt has started to creep in about the future, about 2022 and the contract situation? Or have you always been kind of under control there? No, oh, I sent my resume out to a few construction companies in Australia. <laughs> I thought it was done, you know, I was going home. Work construction or something like that, but no. I mean, this feels a bit better now, but... Uh, it's as easy as that in this game, you know. People forget very quickly, very quickly, and I know you are one of them, Simon. You all forget very quickly about what happens and where you are and how people are. People forget this guy, I mean, all the hypes about these other people, the guy sitting next to me to my left. People forget he finished second in the championship last year on an old bike. People forget. It's as simple as that. And I, I think it's the wrong mentality. You know, a lot of people get a lot more respect than other people around here, and that's just the way it is. And uh, I just try and do my own work and do my own job and, and be the best person that I can be. And uh, at the end of the day, I'll be happy with, with who I am. Thanks. BT with Sport, with Sport Bikes Inc. Uh, first of all, congratulations, Jack, on your victory. Everybody's rooting for you. Congratulations. Uh, the question also is uh, for Frankie. You know, Jack said he had uh, the crutch lows. You know, he has Cal and Lucy giving him the positive messages. And we can obviously sense your frustration, Frankie. Who do you go to in, in these times? Because, you know, you're a positive person. You're the coolest person in the paddock. We know what you're up against. You know what you're up against. Who do you go to in these times to to, uh, to work out your frustration? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, um, my my punch pillow. I don't know how you say it in English. Yeah, my boxing bag. Exactly. My boxing bag is Manu. So I yell at him a lot. Um, I, I always laugh when people think that I'm a, I am a laid-back guy, I'm quiet, but uh, when I get angry, and I get angry quite, quite usually, I get it. I, I do it quite, quite right, and uh, I do it with Manu, <laughs> <laughs> because he's, uh, he's my sidekick, and uh, he's, he knows me since a lot of time, and he knows how to handle my, my rages. Uh, and when I'm home, I just just spend time with uh, with my good friends, and that helps me a lot to decompress and and get ready for for the next battle. I, we know Thank you. also when you are angry. Yeah, as well. <laughs> At home also. Ah, yeah. I haven't seen. You have the same? No, I haven't seen you. You haven't seen? Haven't seen. You hide okay. it very well. Though. You're lucky. <laughs> he hides it very well. No, you just need to spend some more time with me. You'll see it. I only see cool, laid back, and then I see Manu. He's quite cool and laid back. I can do it. Normally, our motorhome, your motorhome must be really quiet, you know, like good soundproofing. I can't hear nothing. Yeah. I get the cup up against the window of mine and everything, trying to hear <laughs> Hi, a, a question Matt Oxley from Motorsport Magazine. I have a question for Jack and for Pecco. First of all, I might have missed this, Jack. I came in late. Um, have you had a chat with Cal yet? And if so, what did you say to him and what did he say to you? No, I haven't seen a phone yet. Um, first thing on the agenda is to call my, my parents, even though it'll probably be, I don't know, 4.30, something like that in the morning there, but I'm sure they'll be uh, still awake. <laughs> They're not going to be able to go to sleep, back to sleep after that one. But um, no, I haven't spoke to Cal. I'm sure I'll speak to them tonight. Um, we got a great group chat between uh, him, myself, and uh, Sam and uh, Al. 
and uh, just stopping in the pit lane with Sammy and, uh, and, and Alex and also all of the Mark VDS guys that I worked with in the past, you know. It, it, honestly, today has just been fantastic to see. I've been around a long time, you know. I'm, I'm only 26 years old, but I've been here a while. And just to see faces I've worked with in the past and stuff like that, to, uh, to see how happy they were, you know. And uh, for them to see me as happy as I was, I think it's just fantastic. And I, I still can't believe it, honestly. Thank you. And, and to Pecco, you, you spent a lot of time chasing uh, Jack today uh, in a race situation. So, and you must have been watching what he was doing very carefully. Can you tell me what he does different to you or what you do different to him? How, how do you, are you the same on the bike or are you slightly different? I think that we have uh, two completely different setup, completely. Uh, but I think that all the riders in Ducati have a uh, different setup. But everyone uh, ride similar. I think that I'm stronger on the brake, on a breaking point, because I can I can start the bike very very soon. But uh, maybe Jack is faster than me in the entry, so I don't know. Uh, today I was catching him, but uh, was uh, in the last part of the race the rear tire was already gone, and also uh, in the last three four laps the front tire was gone. So was difficult to catch him and uh, and was too far to, to see the differences between us. But uh, I think we have two completely different setup. Do, do, do you think you're more of a front rider and he's more of a rear rider? Completely the opposite, I think. Uh, <laughs> you always like the hard front. Oh, you yeah, do, but you do I'm, like... I'm sitting more behind than you. Yeah, I, I have to sit on the front because you've seen where I put my ass in the corners. Yeah. He goes out with his shoulders, I go out with my ass. I try to be a li little bit more like McDoan and he's more like the modern, modern era. <laughs> Perfect, thank you very much. Surely we're done. Nadia Tranchoni from El País, question for Jack. Uh, congratulations, by the way, I'm very, very happy for you. Um, I'm just curious how long uh, it's been since you saw your parent for the last time. January the 18th, my birthday. I left Australia on my birthday. Um, but yeah, I will see them at the, the end of the year after I finish here and go and do my quarantine and whatnot. Oh, fingers crossed we can go to Australia, but we'll, we'll wait and see. Um, but yeah, for sure. It's, it's, it's not easy, you know, living on the other side of the world um, alone. Uh, for sure, it's much easier now than it used to be with FaceTime and all this shit. But, um, but yeah, this year, especially being in the factory team, a lot more media commitments and stuff like that. So I had to come over in January rather than February. So it was a little less time. I did 19 days in quarantine and 28 days out. So. It was a fantastic summer in Australia, and uh, I look forward to going back. Hi, uh, congratulations to you all. And Jack, I'm sure Willow is very proud of her godfather today. It was beautiful to see and all three of you. I wanted to know because I think it will be a little bit hard for you all to celebrate today because you have a test tomorrow, and I wanted to know what's the plan and if there's any plan or you just told them to forget it. <laughs> I cancelled my test. Nah, I don't. <laughs> uh, I will speak with Gigi when I get back to the box. I think the bike is working pretty good here. I mean, what? Uh... Uh, it's going to be difficult to celebrate. What are you going to do? <laughs> Ah, no, I think uh, the test of tomorrow will be very important, but uh, uh, I, th <laughs> I think that, that tonight dinner will be very difficult with Jack. I remember the Australia uh, 2019 that he, made pod he did podium and uh, we were together at the uh, Sunday party and he was very angry with me because I, was, I, I didn't like the tequila and he wanted to to give me tequila, so I have to pay attention with him. 
Drink the tequila roll is okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't have much stuff to try. <laughs> Your bike is two years old. What are you gonna do? <laughs> but it'll be it'll be nice to ride around here in Perez on on Monday after the race, and uh, yeah, we we will try some uh, funny stuff on the setting for sure. Just trying to explore, I guess. That's we will. That's I think what Ramon's want to to do. Guys, sorry to keep you, but you are a popular trio. Well done to all of you here today. You can, you can be free. We'll see you in France. Thank you very much. You can nearly enter your bike in the interview was class, taking so. a yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs>